Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to our next video of Test Pilot course. And in this video, we're talking about working with element locators and running the iOS test on Windows operating system. So this is going to be the first ever tool which is going to run the iOS test on a Windows platform. This is really, really cool and we're going to discuss about that in much greater detail. So let's get started. All right, so now I'm in my test project account and right now I'm in my Windows 10 operating system. So as you can see, this is my Windows operating system and you can see this start menu coming in here, right? So I'm going to go all the way to my project right now and you can see that my test agent has started and I have just plugged in my iPhone device. So this is the same iPhone device I used while I was running the test on the Mac operating system. So it's pretty much the same thing. There is no change here done anywhere. So I've just plugged in and this is the same test gas pay application that we ran in our previous video. I'm just going to open that over here. And if I hit this particular start recording button, this time it should connect with my Karthik's iPhone, iPhone device, which is registered with this uh, test project account. So you can see that it is currently connecting as much same as how it was connecting with the Mac operating system. So there is no change here. It just works as if like it is working in the Mac OS. So this is really, really cool to see that we are running a iOS test from a Windows operating system. And I have never seen any one of the tool actually does the same thing for us. So now if I try to execute this test, this test should execute pretty much like how we executed the test on a Mac OS. So you can see that the application has just rebooted and it is going to search for the location. And there we go. It just worked fine. Pretty much like how we executed the test on a Mac operating system. Very, very cool. So we are executing the same test right now in the Windows operating system. And as you know that we have configured our iPhone device with the test project agent using the account setup that we discussed in our first video. So if you go to the update profile option you can see this is the iOS tab that I got and here is where all my certificates are being generated and it's registered with our test project account and that's why you can see that it is automatically going to talk with our device since it is already registered with the test project account that's really really cool so the next part of this particular video is to see how we can work with the different kinds of elements and again, this is going to be a very, very high level video of how to work with elements because we're not going to deeply dive into each and every elements. Rather, we are just going to see how the elements are being identified with the iOS device applications as well. So now I'm going to jump into my YouTube application, rather the Gatsby application, because it just has like two elements. So I'm going to open the same YouTube application that we worked in our first video of this section. And this is my YouTube application and it has currently opened and you can see that it has the different kinds of steps to perform the operation on this particular ui so once i hover through these elements you can see that we can still use the same shortcuts like double shift to focus the element and then you can perform the action like click flick gesture get text long press gesture tap type text clear content click if visible and things of that nature. Similarly, you can do the validations. You can also check the attributes here. These are pretty much the same unified UI for both Android as well as iOS. And that's the power of test project itself. So there is no difference between different operating systems and different ecosystems here. Test project consider all these different operating systems as a unified way of identifying and performing an operation on those elements. And you can click on any one of the steps here so that you can see what that element is all about. You can still hit this find elements to see where it is currently matching. And if you can see here, the element is like id.ui.pivotbar.fe subscription. So you can just hit this edit and you can make it even more meaningful that how you want this to be looking like. So for instance, if you want to make this as subscription, you can change this and you can see the accessibility ID is what it's used to identify this particular button. So if you hit this button, you can see it has been identified here. We can just save it so that you don't really have a long name over here. 
Similarly, you can go to the another control. I think it's, I don't know what button it is. So if I hit this, it seems like it's an inbox. So I'm just going to change this to inbox here because it doesn't really make any sense to see it as an activity here. So I can just go and change this to inbox and I can hit save. So you can see that now it's making even more sensible to have like a step rather just like how it identified in a raw format. So I can keep on editing all these kinds of control, but it's going to be time consuming process. But as you can see, you can get the point that this is how these elements are being identified. So you can also identify these controls in different way as well. For instance, if I go to this particular library and if I do a double shift here, and if I see how I need to identify this particular control, so I can just go over here, as you can see here. So I can just hit this particular locator. So you can see there is an X path of identifying this particular element over here. Or you can also identify this using its name or its ID or things of that nature. So for this particular control, as of now, I guess we don't really have any other uh, object identification type other than this one. So let's say I want to identify this particular element other than X path, at least something like a name or something. So I can select the name, but I don't really know what is the name of this particular control. So I, I can go over here, do double shift. So you can see this particular control comes in. But as you can see, this particular UI is kind of breaking. Of course, it's not since you can just do a drag and drop here. Just move this particular control over here so that you can get the focus. And you can see there is something called as name here. So probably I'm going to copy this into clipboard. I can just paste it over here. It's really, really easy. So I can do an evaluate. So you can see that I could able to identify this with a name as well. So I'm just going to maybe copy this guy to this control. I guess it has already identified using its accessibility ID for the activity. Again, there is nothing called as name in this particular button because in XUI element type button, there is nothing called name, but you can identify using its accessibility ID. So the accessibility ID that we copied is going to be pretty much the same that it has used to identify this particular control. So you can see that it is working fine, pretty much like how it identified the particular control. So you can do that way as well. So you can see that while you identify the particular element on the runtime, something like if you hover here and if you do a shift, you can see this particular element can be identified using its X path or it can be identified using its name. And Test Project is much intelligent enough to take the best matching way of identifying the element instead of just taking X path. So this is also a really, really cool option that Test Project provides to us so that it can identify the element in a much intuitive manner. So this is how you can keep on identifying this particular element. And also you can override the timeouts if you want. So for instance, if you select this particular timeout, and if you want to choose the timeout of the particular step to be from 10,000 millisecond to maybe 20,000 milliseconds, you can still increase that. But again, working with timeouts and how you can globally manage these timeouts for different kinds of steps at the whole test, we will be discussing all those options in our upcoming videos of this course, at least from the next section. But as of now, just be informed that you can work with timeouts for different steps to identify the element and then perform the next step within the particular test. So this is how you can work with elements and this is how you can execute a test from a Windows operating system instead of working with a iOS operating system. So you don't really have to have a iOS operating system in this case. You can still have a Windows operating system to run the iPhone test from your Windows operating system itself. So that's it guys. This is how you can run the test from Windows operating system on a iOS device. Once again, thank you very much for watching this section and meet you in our next section. Thank you.